This is a John Deere L120 automatic lawnmower, and it's a part of the trade-up challenge here on this channel. If you don't know what that is, we started with a $2 chainsaw. We fixed it. We sold it on eBay. We took the money from that. We bought another broken down lawnmower, fixed it, sold it. You get the idea. The rules are pretty simple. We either have to fix or trade our way up to our ultimate goal, which was originally something to camp in, but has now kind of modified a little bit. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. And I do have to say this particular lawnmower was given to us by a subscriber named Byron. It wasn't running. He didn't want it anymore. He was on his way to Bunyan and he dropped it off at the house. And I did give him a t-shirt. So we technically traded for it little heavier on my end as far as the benefit but it still fits the rules of the trade-up challenge see how this turns out a little bit of a spoiler alert and see what we buy for the next part of the series at the end of the video back up on the trade-up challenge this is a Briggs and Stratton 20 horse Intec L oh the hood's not on L120 lawnmower last time I left you off I wanted to double check the valves I thought that's where we're at I didn't have the right size feeler gauges so they came in Go ahead and pull the valve cover off this side too. Got a 10 millimeter on here. I think I just ran these all in by hand last time to keep them covered. Yeah, it looks that way. And I want to pull the plugs out so we can get top dead center on this while we're setting it. And I did double check the uh, gap, it is 0 .004 on the intake and 0 .006 on the exhaust. Or you can say four thousandths or six thousandths. That's your choice. You can, you can say it how you want. So one thing I want to check, these 20 horse, after doing some research, are pretty notorious for exhaust valve issues and push rod issues. We're going to pull that push rod on the exhaust side. These have a bad tendency to bend and break. They both look okay. The trick I was taught to check for bent bent push rods is to just roll them on something flat. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but I'm pretty sure if it was obvious, I would know. Here's a welding rod with a very slight bend in it. I think I would see something like that if the push rods were bent. They seem to do pretty good, though. Pretty smooth and even. Well, there's some good mechanicking for you. I also want to check these. Make sure where these rocker arms attach. If that's not loose. It looks okay to me. I don't see anything obvious there. So here's the thing. The comment of if your compression is testing good, then your valve setting must be correct. There's not even a push rod on it but the exhaust valve is held closed by the spring. So if I put a compression tester on there and spun that engine, it would show good compression because nothing can get out. But I think we can agree that would not be the correct valve lash setting since it doesn't even have a push rod in it. So just because compression shows good, that does not mean that the valves are correct. Let's make sure we can get this back in where it needs to go. There's a little seat down in there. You can see it. Just you gotta take a little gander. There it goes. And just push the valve back. Oh, I spun the engine. I spun the engine. I need to do this side first because it was the last side that I took out. Alright, so you can see down in there there's a little, little spot where it sits. 
all happy like right there. Get her slid back in right there. Give her a spin. Should have that one where I need it now. And it's where it needs to go. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. We'll just give her a few spins and make sure. So I just got a welding rod. Um, you know, a little flux in the cylinder. Never heard anything. Using the spark plug hole. I've got her rolled around top dead center where I want her. Got a little play net. A little play net. So it should be where we need it. So I got a T40. And that should be a 14. Or a scrunch. Actually kind of works pretty handy for this. Break that loose. So just because I'm a little paranoid about stuff, I got just a little drag on the four thousandths, and then I'll just slide the next size up, just five thousandths, and it doesn't want to go in there. So and on the exhaust, I mean, there's like there's like a whole playground in there. So they are dry. The other day, I swear they were wet with some gas on them, but they're dry today. It was not the valves, but you can still have good compression and valves not be right. We're gonna, you know, and see what happens. Before we suck the entire mouse nest down the intake, let's put this back on, let's let it run, and let's go drive around a little bit. Sounds a little rough, but it hasn't rained in quite a long time, so I think it's got some, some stuff to run through. All right, we'll see if it starts again, and uh, we'll, we'll take her for a spin here, maybe. So this came in while I was gone at Vegas. I think I paid 45 bucks. Came with new carburetor, fuel filters, spark plugs, air filter, and a fuel pump. Whole nine yards. And just just so we know what the issue is here, because I think we can all agree it's starving for fuel. I want to kind of do this in stages. So let's do the fuel pump uh, this way. Hmm. This way. This way. Ah, that way. Let's do the fuel pump first, and then we can see if that makes the difference or not. And if that doesn't do it, then we'll do the carburetor. Went ahead and put the new air filter on, too. Might as well. <laughs> Figure that out. We clearly had it because of the whole running situation. So I did some research on the internet and I figured something out and I want to show you. There's a little wire right here that goes underneath where that coil is. Connect, connects there. Same thing on this one over here. What I found out is to diagnose if it's the coil causing the spark issue or something safety wise, if you disconnect these. 
right there, and get spark, then this is fine, and it's one of the safety switches. If you disconnect this and you don't get spark, then you gotta change your coil out. So let's try it. I disconnected them. Let's see what we get. We'll do it right by the starter there, because that seems safe. All right, here, you ready? I put it over here on the actual engine, it sparks quite a bit better. Can you see that? All right, so I don't know if you can see it, but we'll try. Definitely some lightning bolts on that side. I don't know how well it's shown up, but we got spark. So now I've got them reconnected. No spark, so it's one of the something going on with the safety switches. But I think you know what? What we're gonna? I'm just gonna reach over here. I'm just gonna pull a cable. I don't. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. We'll see what happens now. Sounds pretty smooth to me. I think the fuel pump took care of that issue. Of course, the thing now is that you can't turn it off with the key with those disconnected. So we'll have to figure out which safety switch it is along the way. Just out of curiosity, let's make sure she starts back up. Okay. I'm just guessing, but it should at least have the seat safety. It'll probably have a safety for that, which should be the parking brake. But we'll check that as well. And I'm assuming it's got a neutral safety somewhere in that system. So we're gonna start, it's got the multimeter. We're gonna start with the seat safety. You got a little access hole to get it. You can just slide it with the Seat slider there. I'll slide it a little bit. Positive, negative don't matter. We're just checking for continuity, and I've got this set on. Should hear sound. Mine's not the loudest, but it should beep for us. So in theory, just to eliminate that there's no issues between here and wherever it connects. So it seems like the switch is good. It's got continuity here, and if you hit the button, it does what it's supposed to do. So I think the seat switch is okay. My next guess there's a switch back here on this linkage. But I kind of want to just play around with that pedal a little bit while we crank and see if it... So I've got the wiring harness off. Try it. Oh, my jacket's too fat. There we go. Here's the wiring harness for it. It's right on the back side of that frame. So I'm going to test the harness first. You guys comfortable? Good. Here we go. If we didn't have continuity, then we would suspect that there's a wire broken somewhere between here and where it's supposed to go. That's my guess anyway, right? Like we're just guessing. We're using a little common sense here. So I'm going to assume that's okay. It's too fat to fit in this space. I suppose I could I could take the deck off if I wanted. That's not a crazy amount of trouble. All right, if you guys can hit the pedal for me. Oh, no, it's doing what it's supposed to. I don't think that's a neutral safety. I think that is, it only works in reverse. I think that kills it if you have the blade on and goes in reverse, now that I think about it. Because if you go forwards, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't change that switch. Only if you go... In reverse, yeah, I don't think that's what we're looking for. It's a switch that when you hit the brake, it depresses it. I got the brake on and the parking brake engaged, which holds that up in place. So I should be able to touch 
these two connectors there. If I get you shoved in here somewhere. Oh, look at oh, look at that. The natural lighting. Now that's the shop, bud. The question is, can I get in there now? I don't know. Can you kind of see there? All right, you can kind of see there. I don't know which ones are supposed to be open and which ones are supposed to be closed, but with the four, well, one of these sets should be open with the brake depressed and one should be closed with the brake depressed. We've got it. Are we on right now? No, we're open. No, oh, yeah, brake's on. Okay. I'm going to shove her right in there and just go around until I get a tone. And then we'll learn which ones we need to use. Am I turned on? Oh, bud, you got to turn the multimeter on. That's, yep, that's got to do that. All right, I had your movie up high. I just, I can't get in there. Okay, let's see. Here? Nothing. Well, now we got it there. Okay. So we got a tone on these top twos with the brake on. And if we take the brake off... That should go away, and then we should it should close the bottom one. Okay. So now that should be open. No tone. And then the bottom one should be closed now. There we go. So that switch is doing what it's supposed to do. The other switch we can test is the PTO switch. See if we can pop it out. I don't know if that would keep it from starting. I suppose if it thought that the PTO was on, or was trying to be turned on, it would keep it from starting, so we'll test it real quick. I'm not sure if it'll be the open or closed position, but, so each row is for the circuit, right? They don't run this way, they run this way. So we should get a tone between one of these when they're closed, and a tone between the other set when it's in the... On position. First we'll see. So we got a tone there. So we should have a tone between the bottom and top down each one of these. Yep. Yep. And then we'll... And now, of course it's not utilized on this one, there's no middle spade. But we should have nothing there and there, and nothing there and there. And we should have a tone between those two, and we do. And that one, and we do. But uh, just to be safe, let's just run it a few times and see if, you know, if it's just now starting to go bad, it may, uh, may only do it a certain time or something. Correct? Nothing? Nothing. And then tone. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. If all the switches show continuity right, I'm going to be in for a heck of a mystery here. Okay. All right. What is going on? So if all the safety switches check out okay, perplexes me a little bit, but my next thought is this wire here that we unhooked, maybe wherever it goes, it's just bad somewhere along the way. You know what I mean? And it's doing something it's not supposed to, so I say let's, uh, let's follow that out and see where it goes. So we've got these two here. They run into this wiring harness come out the bottom as solid yellow, solid white. And when they go from there, they wrap around a little bit. And to the best of my tracing abilities, looks like they loop back into this relay. So I wonder if there's a chance if this relay here isn't doing what it's supposed to do. So I didn't hear it clicking at all whenever I was turning the key on this relay. I pulled it out. It's right here. We're going to Try to test it real quick. The first thing I want to do is see if we actually get any clicking. And if it actually sounds like it's doing anything. 
Oh, I hear it now. It's basically like a little electromagnet in there. Electromagnet in there. So now, oh, well, now I need to check continuity with the multimeter and look what I got going on. Okay, let me find some wires. Hold on. So we should get a tone here and a tone here. I just, I don't know which is going to be which yet, but. And we got one there, then we'll disconnect it. And now we should have one between these two. Yeah, well, that appears to be good. We sure are running out of things to check at this point. So I found this wiring situation. This is the ground. These are all supposed to be attached run into here. Down on the PTO, what engages the PTO. And I'm wondering if one of these grounds that runs into here is probably attached to the safety and just had bad connection. Looks like this got ripped off at some point, maybe. The whole thing in here doesn't look great. We're going to see if we can push this clip out. Oh, it locks in on the bottom side. I was pushing the wrong side. We'll see if we can't open these back up and get a new wire in that. So I got that recrimped with some new wire. And we're back in place. Locked in. Looks good. And then both of these are supposed to go to it. I'm going to just cut these both the same length and tie them together. So I got that all tied in. Looks good. Pretty happy with it. These are heat shrink connectors, but I don't feel like firing up the generator for the heat gun and I've got a cordless heat gun coming it's supposed to be here tomorrow. So we'll just hold off on that and I want to go ahead and trace this wire back up through too since these got yanked and pulled on at some point. I want to make sure that this one doesn't have any damage on the route it's supposed to take. Man, the temperature dropped like 15 degrees in a short amount of time. I had to put non-ventilated pants on. That's crazy. Anywho, we're back on it. Or still on it. It's the same day. I just had to eat some lunch and change real quick. So we know all the wiring is good, or from everything I can see, wiring is good. We tested every sensor, but we had spark when we first started working on this, which means it's an intermittent, intermittent, there's mittens involved. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, which means when we tested all the sensors, there's the off chance that when we tested it, it tested good, but then when we use it, it's not actually working. So the next step I know to do is go through those safety switches and just bypass each one individually and see if we can get her going. The seat switch is super easy to bypass on these. All a fella has to do is uh, actually just unplug it. Just gotta, I gotta, just gotta disconnect it. That's it. And that should allow us to start it if that is in fact the issue. Now, as far as getting the blades to engage, that's a different story. We've got to do a little bit of work. In fact, all a fella has to do, I believe, is pull this connector out here. But let's see if this does what we need it to do. Parking brake just engages a cam that keeps that locked up on there. Anyway, anywho. How about a little bit of that, huh? about out of the juice bud we've been trying too much I wonder if I should hook the spark plugs back up that might might do something right, no, let's, let's try that okay all okay you know we're also just I'm just gonna visualize here and see if anything spark we'll feel it too if I hold it like that huh probably we'll just do that And just to eliminate the engine as an issue, I'm going to take the spark plug out and we'll actually just check for spark again. Could also just hold the lead up to the spark plug, but then if it does spark, it's, you know, I'm going to feel that. It's going to be spicy. And they do make inline spark plug testers. Basically, it's just like a light that uh, clips onto that, and then that clips onto it, and then you'll get uh, an electric signal. You'll see it. And 
negatory, not the seat switch. Next one. So on the brake one, we just jumped from one side to the other. There's just two spade connectors. That is shoved down in there, and then alligator clips. I've seen people use nails. I, whatever a fellow wants to use. Piece of copper from some tin two or 12 two. Sure, why not? Whatever tickles your fancy. I'm going purple to pink, because that's what the internet said. So no spark on that, and just to confirm we had the right ones connected, I jumped these two together now, and that should simulate if the brake is not pressed, which means I shouldn't get anything. And I don't. So that was the correct connection when we tested it. Still no spark, so the brake switch is in fact good. I could pull that ignition switch out and make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do, but since the starter's turning, um, I would think it is, but we can we can test it. There's we can test it real quick. So I found a photo online of the schematic. All right, so there are letters all the way around. I don't know if they show up on camera. I found a little diagram online. Actually, another feller made on a YouTube video. But uh, we're gonna run through and make sure that every position we're getting what we should. Uh, we're going to start with the run position, which is not this, but the spring back. Like you've already started it, it's in the run position. So we should get a tone between A1. This just runs back to my positive, which positive, negative doesn't matter here again. We're just looking for the sound. And then B. Well, that is fine in the run position. And then in the start position, we should get the same thing. I can hold it there and then also S. So if I can hold that and twist. So that seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. So far, all positions are showing continuity and I don't. So the ignition switch tests fine. So I'm out of ideas at this point. I'm pretty much down to uh, my final idea, and I'll show you when it's all said and done. It's the kind of idea that comes with a disclaimer, and that includes in the ad whenever it gets sold. I'm not saying it's the right thing, I'm not saying it's the smart thing, and I'm not saying you should do it, but I know there's a lot of people around here that do it, and I'll be honest, the Kind of the same setup on the 755 at this point in my life. So I'm sure somebody will still be interested in buying it as long as we disclose that before we sell it. But I'm going to go ahead and fire this up, test this theory, mow the onions, because that's the only thing we've got up right now, and uh, see how she does. And if that works, I'll show you the final product, and then we'll go get the next thing in the trade-up series, because we'll make selling this part of the video. And I did just for fun. We did figure out was the fuel pump was the issue, because that fixed the fuel problem. But I did throw the new carburetor on there. Just for fun. Just because we got it, you know? Video. Well, that's something. for like an hour. The thing did pretty good. It even went down, let it run in auto. I talked to my neighbor about the pond and I mean an hour's worth of mowing. It did great. No fuel issues. Everything did fine. Blade feels good. Everything feels good. The backup safety still works. So if you back up, you still got to hit the button. If you get off with the blade on, it still dies. So the safeties do still work. So I, I don't know what's going on with it, but I'm going to make a kill switch. So here's how this ended up. I just put a simple toggle switch on here. Off is off and on is on. Doesn't get any simpler than that. I got everything routed real nice and neat in there. Everything 
heat shrink connectors they look good i'm happy with it i gotta put that shroud on i'm just charging the battery overnight so it's topped off i didn't really mow long enough to charge it see if we can get this thing sold and see what replaces it all right so when we first started the trade-up series we were going chainsaw to camper but here's the thing chelsea and i aren't really camper people we are campers but tent campers through and through we always have been and i think we always will be minus you know the primitive cabin from time to time we don't really want the maintenance of a camper and i don't know or tent camper so we kind of changed our tune on what the goal is we decided what we'd like to do instead of making it a trade-up series to get towards a camper is make it a trade-up series to get something we would like to have for a short amount of time fix it up make it nice enjoy it for a little bit and then sell it that's where the next thing comes into play and yeah this is what i went and got and no i mean yeah i'm in it right now but i'm not gonna give you a detailed tour because i made a video on going to pick it up and we're gonna make some videos on it so if you want to see you get a little idea of the picture if you want to see how this turns out you got to stay tuned to the channel and stay subscribed I'm incredibly excited about this. I do want to say thanks again to Byron for dropping off that mower. That means that we do have this, which was free. And we do have this as the running total to go ahead and get started on this project. Whatever we decide to do with it. We've got some options, and I kind of need to figure out what they are. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll definitely catch you on the next one. And thanks for watching.